Let there be resurrection of dead dreams. Any vision and dream and business God gave you that died, let it resurrect. Let anyone here who spiritually, for whatever reason, is dead, come alive again. Let businesses that they have killed and buried come alive again. Tell two people, I see you coming alive again. something any thing God gives you and anything you were born with from your mother's womb that the devil took from you on the third day of this breaking of altars let stolen goods be returned You know, I don't know how desperate you are. But after this third day of breaking of all tests, let every stubborn situation in your life bow in the name of Jesus. Bow in the name of Jesus. Bow in the name of Jesus. Between now and 31st December, any breakthrough and blessing that was meant for you in 2017 which the enemy said you won't have it by divine authority between now and 31st December let it be delivered into your hands let it be delivered into your hands let it come into your hands if you believe it shout yes Shout yes! Shout yes! The Bible says, when they buried Jesus in the tomb, they sealed the tomb with a stone and they put the seal of Caesar on the stone and they put soldiers to guide the tomb and the stone. So physically, Jesus didn't stand a chance to come out. Tell somebody, you were not meant to be here, but God showed you mercy. Somebody say mercy. So for some of us, it's only by mercy that we are standing. Because we were not meant to be here by the plan of Satan. Satan planned 
so that some of us, we didn't stand a chance. And they planned that Jesus won't come out of the grave. That even if he rose on the third day, that he will sophisticate because there was no air in the tomb. He can't survive in the tomb without air. So they sealed the tomb. They put an embargo and said, you are finished. But who is he that saith a thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord God has not commanded it? Whatever they have said, whatever Satan has said, whatever the witches have said, whatever the marine kingdom have said, whatever any devil have said about your life, God has not commanded it. So let it backfire. Let it backfire. Somebody say backfire. 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 In the name of Jesus, backfire, shout yes. Tell somebody, who said you will not make it? Who said it? Tell somebody, who said you would die? Who said you would die? Who? Tell them, say who? So, they place an embargo on the tomb. The enemy has placed embargoes on people. Embargoes on businesses. Embargoes on dreams. Embargoes on marriages. Embargoes on the next level. And I've said you are finished. But I came to declare by authority in the name of Jesus that you are not finished. Tell somebody, I am not finished. I am not finished. Tell somebody, sing because your breakthrough is on the way. Hallelujah. My God, my God. So, the first day Jesus was in the tomb, hell was rejoicing. The people who have been rejoicing against you, eh, they are there to weep, is coming. And the day of your rejoicing is at hand. Hear me. God is changing the time. He's changing the order. He's turning the tables in your favor. I see the tables turning in your favor. If you receive it, shout yes. Hear me, something is happening now. I am not just speaking. When I walk in here, the Lord said, make proclamations. I declare that the tomb is rolled away. Hear me, the, uh, the embargo is lifted. Say is lifted. Any sanctions, demonic sanctions, an embargo they place on you, and place on this house, and place on your pastor. Let the sanctions be lifted. Let the sanctions be removed, and let your stolen goods be returned. Anything that is yours that the enemy has held on to. I command a release in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody say release. Say release. In the name of Jesus, release. On the second day, on the second day, the devil still believed that he had won. Jerusalem was quiet. The disciples were confused. All the women, the mothers and the children and the men who were blessed by his ministry were all confused. And on the third day, there was silence in heaven. And the father stood up and said, enough is enough. Hear me. Enough is enough means this is how far the enemy is allowed to go. And after this affliction, affliction will not rise again. He cannot go any further than this. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say no more affliction, no more affliction. Say no more, no more affliction. Hear me. The stone was rolled away. The seal was broken. Every demonic seal they have put on your life, on your destiny, on your future. In the name of Jesus, let it break. 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 In the name of Jesus, break. Hear me. Tell somebody I'm not crazy. I'm not Tell somebody I can think. I can think. But I'm desperate. I'm desperate. Are you hearing me, somebody? Tell somebody I need a change. I need a change. Amen. You see, when a woman is in labor, eh, whether she's a doctor or a queen or a politician or a lawyer or a judge, when she's in labor and the labor pain is intensified and the baby is about to come, the pain becomes unbearable. At that time, she doesn't care who is there and who is not there. And she doesn't care whether she is a doctor or a lawyer or engineer. She doesn't care about her dignity. She just wants the baby to come. So she doesn't do this. Mm. Mm. I'm a lawyer. Mm. I'm a judge. No. She screams. She screams. Are you hearing me? Shout yeah! Tell somebody, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I can think. think. But right now, I'm desperate. I'm in the labor world. I want this baby to come out. Whatever it takes to download this miracle, I am ready to do it. Shout yeah! Sit down for two minutes. Sit down for two minutes. Hear me. The Bible said, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Why is he was walking towards Jerusalem through Jericho? A blind man by the name of 
But Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, heard that Jesus was passing by Jericho. He was not going to Jericho. He was passing by Jericho. Tell somebody, a miracle is passing by you. Hey. And ladies and gentlemen, blind Bartimaeus had heard that Jesus works miracles and that he opens the eyes of the blind, that he causes changes in the life of those he touches. So he had heard a lot about Jesus. And the Bible said that faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. And he had heard the word about Jesus and it has injected and infused in him faith. What is faith? Faith is divine audacity that makes natural men and women do extraordinary things. Say, I hear you. So the Bible said, he sat by the wayside and that was his life. Every day sitting by the wayside, begging for arms, begging. You won't beg anymore from today. When you have a key, you don't knock, you open. From today and by the end of this breaking of altars, you won't knock for any favor. You won't beg for favor or a blessing. You will open and it shall be open. Sit down, say yes. So blind Bartimaeus was sitting by the way and Jesus was passing by. Jesus was going to Jerusalem at this time to be crucified. And he had told his apostles and his disciples that he was on his way to Jerusalem to be crucified. So number one, they were worried. They were distressed. They were frustrated. They were discouraged and they were angry. And they weren't thinking right. Why is on the way to Jerusalem, passing through Jericho, blind Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming his way. Jesus is passing this way, this way, this way, yeah, Jesus is passing this way oh. is passing this way right now and he heard that Jesus was passing by him he understood on that day that there was a possibility that Jesus would never pass his way again that this could be the only time for Jesus passing his way to Jerusalem and he understood that it is now or never. So when Jesus began to approach, he cried and said, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. The disciples said to him, blind man, Shut your mouth. Jesus have no time for you. It is not true. Some of you, the devil has lied to you and told you that God has no time for you. It's not true. God has time for you. And the Bible said, when the disciples shut him down, you know, it's amazing how when you are in trouble, and you need help, 
people disregard you. And after you don't need the help, that is when they all come around and they are nice to you. I remember times in my life when I was in storms and I had challenges. People I thought were friends forsook me. People I thought were friends and loved ones, they didn't want to talk to me. They wouldn't even pick up my phone. I will go to their house and they will tell the security to tell me they are not in. And the security will say, say uh, my master said I should tell you it's not in, but it's in. Because when they heard of my problem and they look at my situation, they thought I was finished. The same thing happened to Job. When he was going through his crisis, his friends said, Job, what have you done? What sin have you seen? Confess your sin. Job, confess. Tell us. Most times, people don't get into trouble because they sin. The Bible says, for many are the affliction of the righteous, not the sinner. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. Are you hearing me? And most times, especially when you are a child of God, and you carry the light in your family, you become the target of the devil. If in your family, you are one saved among many, and you are the light in your family, or in your town, or in your village, you become the target of the forces of darkness. Why are you a target? Because you are a light. And there is something we call demonic concentration. Instead of them to concentrate on the whole family, they will target only you. Why? Because you are the light. They won't fight anybody in that family. It will be you. Why are they fighting you? And sometimes you don't have anything. But it's not what you have. It's what you carry. Tell somebody, you carry something. Tell somebody, you don't know who you are. You, you don't know who you are. When you are going through attacks, and you are going through crisis upon crisis upon crisis, it's an indication that you are carrying something and you are going somewhere. Because the devil don't spend his time on people who are not carrying anything and people who are not going anywhere. When it comes to Jesus, hear me, when it comes to Jesus, Satan himself tempted Jesus. Satan himself worked on Jesus. When he came to Paul, it was a messenger of Satan. When he came to Mary Magdalene, it was seven demons. When he came to the seed of Jacob, in Mark chapter 5, in the land of Gadarenes, it was legion, 6,000 demons. So demons are more than human beings. And if you look at all these names I've mentioned, and many I can mention, the enemy don't spend his time fighting, attacking, confusing, and worrying, and afflicting people who don't carry something and who are not going anywhere. So if you've been going through something and you are tired because you can be tired and you are discouraged and you are down and you feel like there's no way out and you feel like you are finished you are not sure of tomorrow you see shame, you see mockery and it's like your enemies are rejoicing over you. The prophet said something the other day. He said, my enemy, when I sit in darkness or I fall, rejoice not over me. For the Lord is my light. And if I fall, I will rise again. Tell somebody, I see you rising up again. So they shut blind Bartimaeus down and said, Blind Bartimaeus, don't say anything. He has no time for you. He's not passing by for you. He's not coming from you. 
he's just passing by. I announced to you this morning that I didn't come here for everybody. I came here for only you. Whoever you are, you are the reason why I came. And I came to assure you that God has not forgotten you. And that you will end this year well. It doesn't matter how difficult it has been. It doesn't matter how confused. It doesn't matter how discouraged. It doesn't matter how bad this year has been for you. Better is the end of everything than the beginning. And I declare that your end will be better than your beginning. If you believe it, shout yes. Sit down for two minutes. So he cried. He said, Jesus, I need mercy. Somebody say mercy. mercy. Say mercy. mercy. And the disciples said, quiet. You are not important to Jesus. And this guy was so desperate that he said, you can call me names. You can scream. You can throw things at me. You can misrepresent me. Say anything you want to say. It doesn't matter. Right now, I want my sight. I want to see like you see. I will deal with you after I have recovered my sight. But right now, you are a distraction. I won't pay attention to your insults. I need a miracle. You don't have the power to give me the miracle. So you are a non-entity. You don't matter to me. And the Bible said, and he cried out again. The first time he said, Jesus, please have mercy on me. And they said, quiet. Then he said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And they said, quiet. Then the Bible said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Sit down for two minutes. And the Bible said, Jesus stood still. And Jesus said, this guy, this man, this woman is desperate. Call him to come. The same people who shut him down and said, he has no time for you, turned to him and said, be encouraged. The master is calling for you. Come. Can I prophesy to you? The mouth and the people fighting you today, opposing you, they will sing your praises tomorrow. The mouth that has cursed you is about to bless you. Say yes. Sit down for two minutes. Then the Bible said that when blind Bartimaeus heard that the master was calling him. He was wearing a coat. And that coat, all the money and the arms he's been begging for and receiving all these years, he kept them in it. He didn't send it to the bank. He didn't trust anybody because he can't see. So the coat was his safe and his bank. Because with the coat, he can feel it. He can check and feel that the money is in there. So everything he was and he will ever be was in the coat. When he heard that Jesus was calling for him, the Bible said he removed the coat and threw it aside and said, nothing will hinder me today. My past won't hinder me. My present won't stop me. I will not allow anything to stand between me and the recovery of my son. This morning, I don't know how desperate you are. But if you are desperate, 
you will do what you haven't done before to get what you haven't had before. If you are desperate, you will fast like you've never fasted before. You will pray like you've never prayed before. You will give up. You see, the problem with all of us in life, eh? we are used we are used to our past and we let our past determine our future but you got to let the past go whatever happened to you yesterday whatever happened to you today is not tomorrow don't let your past determine your today and don't let your today determine the choices you make for your future for listen to me all of us we have a past and we've all been through something don't get too used to what is comfortable blind Bartimaeus was comfortable with his coat that was what he knew all the money he had begged for was in the coat but when he heard that Jesus was calling him he understood that where I am going I can't have excess luggage where I'm going I can't take my past with me where I'm going I can't take this habit I can't take this thing that I'm used to is an unusual territory I got to let something go in order to get what I want in life is give and take you lose something to gain something Jesus said, if your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. You have to be willing to lose something. You have to be willing to let something go. You have to be willing to sacrifice something to get what you've never had before. What is it that you can't let go to get your miracle? What is it that is standing between you and God? Is it somebody's husband? Is it somebody's wife? Is it a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Is it marijuana? Is it an addiction of alcohol or nicotine or drugs? What is it that is standing between you and your future? When blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus was calling for him, he gave up. He gave something up to get something new. If you want something new, you have to give up the old. The old and the new can coexist. You can't put new wine in an old wine skin. You got to lose something. You got to let something go, my sister and my brother, in order for you to get what you need. He needed his sight. He needed a new vision. He needed to see clearly. It is frustrating to walk in life, to have eyes, but can't see it. And he said, Lord, I'm tired of not having my sight. I need to see. I need to see. And he knew that something wasn't working right. And he said, in order for me to see, I got to give up something to be able to see my way clear. And the Bible said, he gave up his coat. And this was a man desperate. Went to Jesus and Jesus said, what can I do for you? And he said, that am I receive my sight. Jesus said, receive your sight. Hear me. Joseph was in prison for many years. Then one day, tap somebody. Tap somebody. Just tap somebody. Tap somebody. Say, come alive. Come alive. When Joseph heard that Pharaoh was calling for him, the Bible said he changed his garment. Ah, some of you, you have to change your garment. Eh? Some of you, you have to change your image. Some of you, you need a haircut. Some of you sisters, you said no brother is looking at me. Change your dressing. Change your attitude. Change your hairstyle. Don't say, as for me, this is the way I am. No, 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 no. You got to change something for where you are going. So the Bible said, and he changed his garment 
What did he do? He removed the prison garment down and he wore something different. And number two, the Bible said, and he shaved. Tell somebody, you must shave. Tell somebody, you need to shave. Tell somebody, you need to switch from being a prisoner to a prince. He shaved. Tell somebody, shave. Tell somebody, switch. Tell somebody, turn it around. Turn it around. Just turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. He understood that the Egyptians in those days, they didn't like beard. And he was dressed as a prisoner. When he heard that the king was calling for him, he shaved. He changed for where he was going, not for where he was. Some of you are still dressing for where you are. Even though the season have changed, you are still dressing in the past and in the now and not for the future. And as long as you dress for where you are and not for where you are going. You know, there are certain cocktails and dinners when they invite you, they have a, a code hmm, to dress. Some, some of them, they will say black tie. And there are certain restaurants, certain restaurants in abroad. When you go, if you don't dress in a certain way, they will turn you out. It doesn't matter the money you have to tell you, no, I'm sorry, you can't come here. Some of you, you want a breakthrough, but you haven't dressed for your breakthrough. Some of you, some of you, you want a husband, but you are not dressed for a husband. You want a wedding, but you are not dressed for a wedding. You can't come in here on your wedding day wearing jeans and t-shirts. You are not dressed for the occasion. Tell somebody, dress for the occasion. Hear me. Whenever they are going to have a wedding, let's say the wedding is Saturday, and I see a lot of weddings next year. A lot of weddings. Now, before the wedding, there is a rehearsal. Are you hearing me? Look at me and say, I hear you. Hear me, hear me, hear me. They come to rehearse. And in the rehearsal, they show you everything that must be done before the D-Day. Then on the D-Day, when you come, you follow instructions and do what you were told. And the things you practice on the rehearsal, you do it. On the wedding day. So you walk in here and you hear ting, 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 ting. That is for you. You are about to hear ting, 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 ting. It's in the pipeline. Sit down for two minutes. But you have to practice before ting, 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 ting. Tell somebody, practice, practice. If you want to be a millionaire, it's not automatic. I can't lay hands on you and give you anointing oil for you to become a millionaire. You have to practice it. If you want to be a president, it's not automatic. Life is a process. You have to follow the procedure to get to the top. Joseph changed his image. You need a change of image. If you want to be a millionaire, you must walk with them and act like them and think like them before you become the Bible says, he that walk with wise men 
shall be wise. But he that walks with fools shall be destroyed. Who are your friends? I can tell you your future by the people you work with. When I see who your friends are, I can predict your tomorrow. I don't need prophetic powers to prophesy. Choose your friends wisely. After Jesus, he blind Bartimaeus, there was a woman suffering from an issue of blood for 12 years. The Bible says she has spent all she had on doctors. She grew worse and she was not better. And the Bible says she heard that Jesus was passing by. Not coming to her place, but he was what? Passing by. In life, eh, you have to learn how to take charge and to take advantage of opportunities that life presents to you and maximize them to the fullest. Say, I hear you. Somebody say, talk to me. Somebody say, you are talking to me. Yeah, I'm talking to you. So hear me. A lot of us, we miss opportunities in life. And some opportunities don't come twice. They come only once. And they never come again. That's why the children of Israel, the journey of 40 days from Egypt to Canaan became a journey of 40 years. When Jacob died, they embalmed him and they carried him to Canaan and buried him. And it wasn't a 40 years journey. It was a 40 days journey. When they came to Egypt in the time of farming to buy food, it wasn't a 40 years journey. When they went back to bring their younger brother, it wasn't a 40 years journey. But in life, when you miss the opportunities that God gives you, it can prolong your journey and it can prolong your blessing and it can prolong your promotion and it can prolong your miracle. And sometimes it is our attitude, bad attitudes, can stop or prolong your miracle and your victory. But I pray today, for everyone hearing the sound of my voice, that let nothing prolong your breakthrough. Let nothing prolong your deliverance. Let nothing prolong your blessing. But let your blessing be accelerated. Let your victory be accelerated. Let your change be accelerated. If you believe it, shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Sit down for two minutes. Somebody say, do it, Lord. Am I talking to somebody? I told you I didn't come for everybody. I came for you only. So it's just me and you alone. Say, I hear you. And the Bible said she has spent all that she had on physicians, but grew worse. And she heard that Jesus was passing by. And few things was against this woman. Say contradictions. Say the law. Say disfavor. Say the status quo. Society, the thinking, public perception, public opinion, everything was working against this woman according to the Levitical law because she was bleeding. She must not come among men. One. Two. She couldn't even go into the church, into the temple or the synagogue for help because she was bleeding. According to the law of Moses. When women were in their cycle, they can only go to church after seven days because seven is the end of a cycle. So they were not allowed to go into the church until seven, the seventh day. Two. They were even not allowed to cook for their husbands or their children because they are seen as unclean 
when they are in their menstrual cycle. So there was contradictions here. And this woman knew that if she came into town, stinking, smelling, bleeding for 12 years, and everybody in town knew about it, and the town was very little, it was a small village, everybody knew about her. They saw and said, unclean, unclean, unclean. And she couldn't even go into the church, much more the temple. And for 12 years, if she was married, she couldn't have anything to do with the husband. She couldn't cook for the husband, bleeding for 12 years. She was desperate. She heard Jesus was coming to town. And the Bible said, she said in her heart, If I can but touch, somebody say touch. Ah, touch. The hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Somebody is about to be made whole today. You know, she said in herself. Sometimes you have to say it to yourself. Because if you tell others, they will discourage you. If you tell others, they will say, hey, a queer, a child, a joa. You are going to town with the way you are stinking as men. Everybody knows your problem. Do you know it's against the law? You can't go to town. You can't go to the temple. You can't go to town. You'll be killed. The men will stone you. How many women do you see out there? And you are going there among these men. They will finish you. Sit here. The Bible said, she said, in her cell. If I can, if I can bring myself to believe, if I can bring myself to dare to believe that I will get my miracle and my change today. If I can be desperate enough for change, for a miracle, for a touch of the master's hand, anything is possible. And she said to herself, sometimes in life, you have to learn how to encourage yourself. Because sometimes the people you think will encourage you will discourage you. The Bible said, and David encouraged himself. Sometimes you have to speak to yourself. Sometimes you have to learn how to encourage yourself. That's why David said, do I fall, I'll rise again. You got to learn how to speak to yourself. Because if you are depending on people to encourage you, sometimes your wife won't encourage you. Sometimes your husband won't. Sometimes your parents and your children will not encourage you. Children are very selfish. Sometimes you'll be left all alone. You are surrounded with people, but lonely. And you got to learn how to encourage yourself. In this world, people who do great things must cultivate the ability, the capacity and the audacity to lift themselves up. You have to learn how to lift yourself up. So the woman, knowing the thinking of society and how people will handle her and the fear they will put in her and tell her, hey, a child. And she said, I am not ready to hear anybody tell me anything. I'm not ready for anybody to put me down. This is my time. Tell somebody, this is my time. This is my time. Ah, tell somebody, this is my moment. Don't even try it. Because you can't stop me. It's too late. This is my moment. And the Bible said, she went on her knees and she started crawling through the legs of men, not women, men. Stinking. I'm smelling. I'm stinking. But it's just for a moment. I'm going through something, but it's for a moment. Ah, I don't have what it takes to get what I want, but it's for a moment. I may not look good right now, 
Paris for a moment. I may be down today, but I'll be up tomorrow. It's just a moment. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody say yes. Sit down for two minutes. The Bible said she crawled on her knees. Walking through the legs of men, they could have kicked her, stamped on her, but she was determined. Tell somebody I'm desperate. <sighs> Tell someone, don't look down on me. Eh? I'm desperate. Tell someone, there's nothing wrong with me, oh. but I'm desperate. <sighs> Tell somebody, I know, I know. I know you are looking at me some way. Uh, but weeping endures for the night. Uh, joy comes in the morning. Uh, that's why it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Because time changes. It's just a matter of time. Uh, I may be living in Santa Maria, but it's a matter of time. I live in the backside of Accra, but it's a matter of time. I don't have water flowing in the house I live in, but it's a matter of time. I don't have water or standby generator, but it's a matter of time. I don't have connection in high places, but it's a matter of time. Are you hearing me, somebody? Tell two people, it's just a matter of time. You know, David was a nobody at the backside of the desert. He was written off. His own father and siblings disregarded him. When they were calling for all the sons of Jesse to line up to be chosen and to be anointed as king, the father concluded that everybody was qualified. Anyone can be king, but not David. This David... He smells like sheep. He thinks like sheep. He acts like a sheep. This one, he can't be king. So he said, you stay with the sheep. Stay at the backside of the desert. You don't have what it takes. So the prophet came. He saw them and they looked huge. Men, macho. He took the horn. Then when he pours the oil, the oil won't flow. You know what I said? The oil won't flow because they were not the one. When you are not the one, the oil won't flow. Are you hearing me? The oil didn't flow. On all the seven, the oil did not flow. So he turned to Jesse and said, Jesse, the oil won't flow on any of these seven sons of yours. Is there anyone else? Apart from these ones. And he started thinking, I said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There's one. But as for him, he can't be qualified. Hear me. God does not call the qualified. Hear me. Hear me. He calls the unqualified and he qualifies them. <laughs> Say yes. If it was left to man alone, I wouldn't have been called. If it was left to man alone, I wouldn't would be preaching. I was not qualified. But mercy qualified me. Are you hearing me, somebody? So I can't take credit for anything. Hear me. So, Jesse said, he's at the backside of the desert, and he said, send for him. We won't sit down. And he came. When he came, he looked some way. So as soon as he came, the Lord said to the prophet, this is the king. And, and, and the prophet, the prophet looked at him and said, this. And God said, I don't judge by sight, but by the condition of the heart. <laughs> Physically, he doesn't look like a king, but he has a king's heart. Tell somebody, don't judge me by the way I look today. Because you can't, you can't predict my future. You can't predict my future. You don't know my tomorrow. 
So be careful how you treat me. Because conditions can change just like that. Just like that. 24 hours. Overnight. Nelson Mandela was in prison for 27 years. Just one day. They called him. From prison. To the palace. Joseph. From prison. To the palace. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter your background or education background or the color of your skin or who your father and your mother is. It's not the color of your skin. It's not your father or your mother. It's not the village or the tribe you came from. It is your connection with God. Ah, somebody. I said, say connection, connection. And it's your heart. Your heart. Sit down for two minutes. So, the woman broke through on her knees, little by little, and she touched the hem of his garment. Why the hem of his garment? Because the oil flows from the top of Aaron's head through the beard down to where? That's right. That is where the power is. That is where the oil settles. And he said, I need to access this oil. I need to touch the oil. And the Bible said that because of the anointing, every yoke shall be broken. This morning, wherever you are, whoever you are, as you hear the sound of my voice, let your yoke be broken. Let the snare be broken. Break free and break out. Break through on every side. In the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Say yes. yes. Sit down for two minutes. Jesus said, who touched me? Peter said, Jesus, why did you say who touched you? Everybody is touching you. Everybody. Including me. I'm not even touching you, I'm pushing you. Jesus said, Peter, Peter, you don't get it. I'm not talking about pushing me or just a touch of curiosity. I'm talking about a touch of desperation. This touch is a touch of restlessness. It's a touch of desperation. Somebody touch me. And virtue left me. When the person touched me, I felt power leaving my body. And everybody started looking all around and say, hey, who did this? Who has taken the man's power? And the woman said, master, master, I've been bleeding for 12 years. I've lost all that I have. I heard you were passing by. I knew you worked wonders and miracles. I touch you by desperation. Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you whole. <laughs> Hear me? When Jesus pronounced her whole, nobody could touch her. The men can't kill her. She can't be arrested. Nobody can say she's broken the law because she's no more unclean. She's been pronounced whole. This morning, I declare you whole. I declare your finances healed. I declare your body healed. I declare your marriage healed. I declare your business healed. I declare your family healed. I declare the healing of this church. I declare the healing of your loved ones. The healing of your children. The healing of your wife. The healing of your husband. Home and abroad. Wherever they are. I command their healing right now. I command their deliverance. I command their recovery. If you believe it, say it. Look at me. I want us to pray in a particular way. 
In Luke 22, 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan have desire to have you and to grind you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Satanic desires. Whatever plan Satan has for you between now and 31st December, let it be cancelled. Whatever plan Satan has for your children, your husband, your wife, your loved ones, this house, your house, Jesus. this nation, Jesus. whatever plan Satan has by divine authority, let it be overturned. Let it be overturned. Put your hands together. Command it to be overturned. We overturn any plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We overturn it. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, please. Holy Ghost, do it again. Yeah, do it again. In my life. Yeah, open my eyes. Yeah, to see Jesus. Enslaved you and your family be broken. Let demonic altars be broken. Let chains be broken. Let shackles be broken. Let bondages be broken. Let the captives be released. I command your release in the name of Jesus. You are released from the power of the grave. You are released from hell. Release from the power of death. Release from every misfortune. No more misfortunes. Give somebody a high five and say, No more misfortunes no, no, in no Jesus' more. name. No more misfortunes. No more. Hallelujah. I want us, I want us to do something. I want every woman here to bind your mother's demon and to reverse your mother's curse. And I want every man here, bind your father's demon and reverse your father's curse. The Bible says like mother, like father, your mother was an Ammonite and your father was a Hittite. Any demon that fought your mother and any curse that followed your mother, let not that curse follow you. In the name of Jesus. Let that demon be overridden. Every woman here, bind your mother's curse, rebuke your mother's demon, and reverse your mother's curse. Every man hearing me, rebuke your father's demon. 
reverse your father's curse. Put your hands, open your mouth, do it right in the name of Jesus. I rebuke my father's demon. Look at me. How many of you remember Moses? Moses, wait at me. Remember Moses in the Bible? You know why Moses didn't enter the promised land? There was a demon in his bloodline. He started with his great grandfather. The name of his great grandfather was Levi. And do you remember that Levi and Simeon? When they cut a covenant with the city where his, their sister Dinah was raped with the prince of the city, that if you want to marry our sister, let all the men in the city be circumcised. And the Bible says, after the circumcision, in three days after the circumcision, Levi and Simeon went to the town and they slaughtered all the men when they were in pain and saw and bleeding, they killed them. And the Bible said, and Jacob cursed their anger. Now, Moses came from the bloodline of Levi, and his father's name was Levi. And when Moses was almost there, that anger, that anger rose up. And when God says, speak to the rock, he struck the rock. And God said, no, you can't enter the promised land. That anger was hiding anything in your DNA that is hiding as a demon that will sabotage you at the hour of your breakthrough and at your Kairos moment. Any father cares and any mother cares that will sabotage you at the last minute by divine authority, through the blood of Jesus, Jesus. reverse it, rebuke it now. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. I want us to deal with our family demon. Every family has a demon. Jesus said, a man's enemy shall be those of his own house. Every family demon that are blocking you, interfering with your star and your future, your destiny, your marriage, your finances. There are some families, eh? The women are beautiful, educated, and good, but they don't marry. There are some families too. The men, they are educated, but everything they try don't work. There are some family, their great-great-grandfather never built. Their father didn't build. No, no man has ever bought a land and laid the foundation and finished it. When they buy the land, there will be litigation until they die. If they lay foundation, they will never finish building it. There are family demons and family curses. Hear me. Every family demon and every family curse, let the curse be repealed. And let, let that demon in your family policing the curse be arrested. And let it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command divine exemption from tonight. I command divine escapes. You will be the first in your family that broke through what nobody could break through. You will be the first in your family that escaped what nobody could escape. There are some families, people don't live long. They die at a particular age. You are exempted in the name of Jesus. Say, I claim divine exemption. 
by the blood of Jesus, I escape the power of my family curse. I rebuke my family demon. Open your mouth, put your hands together, I rebuke it. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, 23 says to buy the truth and sell it not. Stop by the Dominion Bookshop today for exciting items just for you. From prayer shawls to books and DVDs, anointing oil, audio CDs, journals, and much, much more. Don't forget that the CDs and DVDs from every service will be available right after the service. And you can also purchase materials from all of our powerful impact speakers at the Dominion Bookshop or one of our booths located in the foyer. Dominion Bookshop, like no other place.